Well, all right, folks, we have made it to the doorstep of the election. And for those of you that have been following our election dispatches, we've traveled from the East Coast to the South, to the Midwest, to the Southwest, to the Great Northeast, talking about some of the key dynamics in this year's presidential election. And now here we are, our final dispatch on the eve of the election, and the stakes don't get any higher than this. So today I'm gonna to talk about five things that I'm gonna be keeping my eye on on election day and election night. First off, it's the swing states. I know, that one seems pretty obvious, right? But it's true. This is gonna be an extremely close election and it's going to be decided in the seven swing states where the margins are incredibly tight. Now, among those swing states, there's one in particular that's probably gonna hold the key to this election, and that's my home state of Pennsylvania. Go Birds! Yes. Whoever wins Pennsylvania is gonna have a much clearer path to the presidency. According to the statistician Nate Silver, if Kamala Harris wins Pennsylvania, she's got an 88% chance to win the election. And if Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania, he's got a 90% chance to win the election. And look, it's no secret how important this state is. Both candidates have spent a lot of time here. They've also spent a lot of money. The campaigns, along with their affiliates, have spent over half a billion dollars on advertisements in Pennsylvania. So this is a state that the whole world is gonna be following with a magnifying glass the night of the election. Two, demographics. There has been a lot of talk this election cycle about shifting demographics. Polling indicates a potential Trump advantage with younger men. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris performing very strong with women. Now, surprising for a lot of people, Polls are showing that about a quarter of young black men support Trump. That's a big number, especially when you consider that black men backed Biden about nine to one in 2020. You also have polls showing increased support for Trump among young Latino men. This is bad news for Kamala Harris because even a minor demographic shift can be enough to flip this very close election. Three. Get ready for a long night. There's a chance that this election is gonna be every bit as close as the polling data says it will be. And it could take a while to count votes in these critical swing states like Michigan and Pennsylvania. Now we do expect things to move a little quicker this year. And back in 2020, a full 43% of Americans submitted their ballot by mail. Remember, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Things are a little better now. We expect more in-person voting. It's still gonna take some time to count. Now, the longer it takes, the more rumors and conspiracy theories are gonna start flying around the internet. They're gonna say the machines are flipping votes. They're gonna say ballot boxes are appearing out of nowhere. Or the ghost of Hugo Chavez hacking voting machines with the Serbians. You're gonna hear a rash of crazy stuff on November 5th. And it's actually kind of a shame because election experts tell us this is gonna be just about the most safe and secure election in American history. Four, remember, it's not just about the president. On November 5th, Americans will be making crucial votes for the Senate and the House, as well as on thousands of other positions and issues. For example, let's look at Ohio. Donald Trump is expected to win that state. But Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown is desperately fighting to hold on to his spot there. And that's important. If the Democrats lose a net of just two Senate seats or a net of one Senate seat and the presidency, they're gonna lose control over the Senate. Election forecast models currently predict Republicans to win both the Senate and the House. If they're able to do that and combine it with a Trump victory for president, that will be a tremendous amount of power concentrated in Republican hands. But if the Democrats can win just one of those three, we're talking the Senate, the House, or the presidency, they'll have a little bit of leverage to slow down that MAGA momentum. And then remember, some of the key votes on election night are gonna be for issues and not for people. In Arizona, which is a swing state, there's a ballot measure on abortion. So that's important in and of itself for the people of Arizona. 
But there's also an interesting interplay going on here between ballot initiatives, presidential politics, and turnout. Because of that initiative, maybe more Democrats will turn out to vote. Maybe more Republicans will turn out to vote. Either way, that's going to impact the outcome on the presidential race. And lastly, fifth, we're going to be keeping our eye out for signs that this election is going off the train track and becoming a national disaster. Americans have never had an election like 2020, where the loser refused to accept the results, where the loser attempted to pressure election officials into switching the ballot count, where the loser led a rally that turned into an assault on the American Capitol. American democracy was on the ropes in late 2020 and early 2021, and a lot of people are concerned that it can't survive another assault. So what would be a sign that things are going wrong? Well, we told you before to expect a long night. It's going to take a while to count all those votes. Historically, the mail-in ballots, which are counted last, are heavily Democratic. So it's possible at first that it'll look like Trump is winning until they get to those ballots. That's what happened in 2020. And the fear is, if that happens again, and Trump is showing a lead early in the evening, he may claim victory before all the votes have been counted. And if that happens, it could become very messy very quickly. So those are five things we're gonna be watching here on election day and election night. We hope everyone stays safe out there during the vote and that this experiment in American democracy lives to fight another day. And we'll be right back with you on the other side of the election to talk about the results.